Macroautophagy, hereafter autophagy, is an intracellular degradative process conserved among eukaryotes. The hallmark of autophagy is the sequestration of the cargo destined to destruction inside double membrane vesicles called autophagosomes. Cargos include aberrant or dysfunctional protein and protein complexes, superfluous or damaged organelles, and invading pathogens. Autophagy is defined as bulk or non-selective when the cargo destined to turn over is heterogeneous in composition and appears to be captured randomly, while they are considered selective when a distinct cargo, for example, a mitochondrion, is exclusively targeted. Around 20 autophagy-related or ATG proteins compose the highly conserved core machinery that controls autophagosome biogenesis in all eukaryotes. The proteins encoded by these genes have been divided into six functional modules. The Hulk kinase complex, the autophagy-specific phosphatidyl inositol-3 kinase complex, the ATG9A positive vesicles, the ATG2-WP complex, the ATG12 and the LC3 conjugation systems. However, there are forms of macroautophagy that do not require the function of all ATG modules, and those have been defined as unconventional. Conversely, a single or group of ATG proteins operate in other cellular processes. Autophagosome biogenesis and consumption can be divided into five discrete and consecutive steps, each one involving specific sets of core ATG proteins, but also other factors. Initiation, expansion, maturation, tethering and fusion, and breakdown and recycling. Although both bulk and selective types of autophagy involve autophagosomes, their induction mechanism differs. The initiation step of bulk autophagy is characterized by the activation of the Hulk kinase complex. Multiple signaling cascades regulating autophagy directly act on this complex. The supramolecular assembly and activation of multiple Hulk kinase complexes generate a scaffold for the formation of the phagophore, the precursor structure of the autophagosome, which is initiated by heterotypic fusion of ATG9A positive vesicles with vesicles that are probably derived from multiple membrane sources, including recycling endosomes and ER. This event takes place adjacently to the ER. The autophagy-specific phosphatidyl inositol-3 kinase complex also participates in phagophore nucleation by catalyzing the synthesis of phosphatidyl inositol-3 phosphate on nascent autophagosomal membranes. This is important for the recruitment of the components of the ATG machinery involved in the phagophore expansion. The expansion step relies on the association to the phagophore of the ATG machinery components, such as the ATG2-WP complex and the ATG12 and LC3 conjugation systems that eventually conjugate the members of the ubiquitin-like LC3 protein family to the phosphatidyl ethanolamine present in the membrane of the growing phagophore. ATG2 proteins are key in supplying part of the lipids required for the phagophore expansion through their direct transfer from the endoplasmic reticulum. In conjunction with the ATG9A lipid scramblase activity, the ATG12 and LC3 conjugation systems marginally participate in this process and are more crucial for the closure of the phagophore into an autophagosome and its subsequent transport and fusion. Phagophore closure appears to also require the escort 3 complex. The maturation step is characterized by the dissociation of autophagosomes from the endoplasmic reticulum and the release in the cytoplasm for reutilization of the components intervening during autophagosome biogenesis. Two important aspects of this step are the hydrolysis of phosphatidyl inositol 3 phosphate into phosphatidyl inositol by phosphatasis from the myotubularin family and the deconjugation of the LC3 proteins from their lipid anchor by ATG4 cysteine proteases. For the tethering and fusion steps, motor proteins and microtubule tracts ensure the encounter of autophagosomes, first with late endosomes to form amphosomes and then lysosomes, or directly with lysosomes to generate autolysosomes. Tethering of autophagosomes with these compartments of the endolysosomal system is coordinated by the small GTPase RAB7, its guanosine exchange factor, its downstream effector HOPS complex, and additional tethering factors. The subsequent fusion is mediated by snare proteins. The breakdown and recycling steps consists in the lysis of the inner autophagosomal membrane and the turnover of the cargo by lysosomal hydrolytic enzymes. This event generates the basic metabolites that are subsequently transported into the cytoplasm for their use as either building blocks for the synthesis of new macromolecules or energy sources. 
Selective autophagy is involved in the regulated turnover of portions of organelles, including mitochondria, mitophagy, peroxisomes, hexophagy, and the endoplasmic reticulum, ERphagy, but also large protein RNA complexes, such as protein aggregates, agriphagy, and pathogens, xenophagy. Selective autophagy relies on the so-called autophagy receptors by physically linking the membrane of the autophagosomes. They bind the cargo to be cleared on one hand, and LC3 proteins localized in the inner membrane of the phagophore on the other hand. The binding between the autophagy receptors and the end terminus of the LC3 proteins rely on the short LC3 interacting region, or LIR. Other motifs also exist. For example, the ubiquitin interacting motif-like sequences that bind to an alternative site in the LC3 proteins. There are multiple types of autophagy receptors, and they are often grouped based on how they recognize cargos. Ubiquitin-mediated versus ubiquitin-independent recognition. While the ubiquitin-binding autophagy receptors are soluble, those that are ubiquitin-independent are mainly membrane-bound. Engagement of the ubiquitin-dependent autophagy receptors is dictated by the ubiquitilation of the cargo destined to degradation. For example, P62, NBR1, optinurin, TAX1BP1, NDP52, and TOLIP. All have an ubiquitin binding domain to bind ubiquitilated cargos during xenophagy, mitophagy, and agriphagy. Membrane-associated autophagy receptors intervene in the clearance of organelle portions, for example, NIX and BNIP3, two mitochondrial outer membrane proteins that mediate the selective sequestration of mitochondria into autophagosomes and mediate mitophagy during red blood cell differentiation and hypoxia. Engagement of membrane-bound and of ubiquitin-independent receptors is often achieved through their phosphorylation, but other post-translational mechanisms can also regulate their activity. The binding of soluble autophagy receptors to the cargo or the activation of membrane-bound autophagy receptors leads to the recruitment of FIP200. The role of the autophagy receptors and FIP200 has the function to recruit and concentrate Hulk kinase complexes, leading to the activation of their kinase activity and the concomitant formation of a scaffold, which is essential to assemble the ATG machinery and initiate the formation of an autophagosome. The crosstalk between the autophagy receptors and the Hulk kinase complex involves kinases, such as TBK1, which phosphorylate the autophagy receptors, thereby increasing their binding affinity for the LC3 proteins. The interactions between the autophagy receptors and LC3 proteins is probably also playing an important role in the hermetic and exclusive sequestration of a cargo within an autophagosome. Upon activation of the Hulk kinase complex, the downstream steps that lead to the formation and consumption of an autophagosome during selective autophagy appears to be identical to the ones taking place during bulk autophagy.